Uh, all right, the game, the game that uh, that already happened against Seattle the second time around. Zoe, we talked about it a lot last week going in. Defense played so well against them the first time. Right? Could they do it again the second time? I don't know that the defense was the story of the game, but that was a, an area that took a hit from the first time. So would you see defensively from the Cardinals? More so in the sense of can they get back to where they were now going forward? Right. And I think so. I mean, when you, when you go back and watch the film, a lot of the stuff that occurred was that Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks almost had like the perfect play dialed up yeah. for the defense. Um, I, and when I when you go back and look at a couple of the runs, uh, you have Buda Baker and and I think Mac Wilson coming off the left side, and then they end up running the ball the other side. But when they run the ball away from them, they pull the guard and the tackle. And when they pull the guard and the tackle, both of those players carry gaps with them. And so now those two gaps that was with the guard and the tackle, let's say to the left side, now end up on the defensive right side, and you have. Buda Baker, Mac Wilson, two of your, your best defensive players. On the back side, essentially, you have three people in one gap. And on the run, they have to figure out, okay, where do I fit? Buda was able to do it because he's coming from depth. Mac Wilson was more outside, so it would have been really hard for him to come back and, mm -hmm. and fit in. And so Seattle, they find the running back finds a, where that where the person isn't, yeah. and ends up hitting his head on the goalpost. And that happened a couple of times. Another time they had a big uh, they they was in cover four, and they end up throwing a screen right down to the running back, which is really hard in cover four because typically it's the outside backer, the seam flat player that has him essentially. But now you have two guards in front of you or a guard and a tackle that you have to try to get by to stop him. And another big play happened. So it was a lot of that. And then a couple of times, I think they had the right call. It was just poor execution. Again, fitting the gaps appropriately. Am I seeing the guards pull? Am I seeing people? And then where do I fit off of that? And then lastly, uh, a couple of shifts, a couple of motions. Uh, they came out in four by one a couple of times. And I don't think they were on it as far as communicating who has who and then making sure they push in the right direction. And you saw Geno Smith be able to take a, take advantage of some of their, I don't know if lack of preparation it is the right term, but I would say lack of recognition mm. in the moment to execute mm. well. So I don't want to lead you in any way, shape, or form on this question. So I'm just going to ask you right now, what's your number one takeaway from the Seattle Seahawks game, the Arizona Cardinals losing that game, and where they're at right now in this part of the season? Um, I mean, what, you know, obviously we talked about this a little bit, right? They, they've put themselves where all they can do right now is win the next one, win the next one, win the next one, win the next one. That's what they have to do. But in order for them to do that, they have to cut down on the penalties, and a lot of that is technique work. And I'm thinking... And what pops to me is probably the offensive line. Yeah. Right. And so, again, I, you know, we, we talk about guys, but let uh, Paris is 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 going to be a bell cow in this league. And right right now, he's struggling a little bit, kicking and then opening up and letting people edge him. He keeps showing up over and over and over. So I know they see that on film. He has to get that fixed because that's putting him in a hole sometimes. Right. Um so that those penalties, and then I would also say Kyler needs to trust himself. He does it sometimes, but not all the time. And they need him to be all all comfortable as far as what he's seeing in order for this offense to be what it needs to be for them to win games, right? Because you have the turnovers, right? This last, what, five turnovers in three weeks where mm -hmm. he's done the best job yes. of it? Yeah. You, they're not good enough to overcome those yet, right? And all turnovers aren't created equal. Correct. But this team isn't good enough to overcome that quite yet, especially now that the defense is, hasn't been able to keep teams out of the end zone. And so when you have turnovers and now we're not keeping people out of the end zone, you end up losing more games than winning them. Um, and so I think that is going to be the bi biggest thing. So penalties, the turnovers, and then just executing and doing your job. That was the biggest thing for the defense when I see it, not just not executing. And the same thing on the offense, offensive line. Like just letting guys out, you know, and it's so much because you watch the game back as a coach. <laughs> you know, guys have to finish as well. Even if you're not in great position, your fundamentals aren't right. And they called a couple of guys out on that, right, probably in the, in the meeting rooms. You have to finish. You can't just run up to guys and put your hands on them. You got to keep your feet running and try to dog them, right? I saw uh, Mac, Mac, uh, McBride. Yeah, McBride one time, and he's probably leading this, so they probably showed him this is what it needs to look like. Uh, they ran a sell concept. He was running a seven route. They didn't throw him the ball. They threw the check down the tip. He went and found the dude and, like, dog, he took him to the water coolers, right? <laughs> yeah. And they need that across the board. Yeah. When you watch the game, everybody wasn't playing with that intensity. 
in in or in, in in order to overcome the talent deficit that you know on paper that they have, you got to play with your hair on fire That's right. like that. That's right. That's the only way you can overcome it: executing and playing with your hair on fire and wearing the other team out. Um, throughout the course of the game. And so that's where I see if they want to win these next four, they have to turn up the intensity. I know it's week 15. I know everybody's hurting, but oh well, right? You signed up for this. And then just executing, which I know they're being prepared with. They just have to execute and recognize it within the game. The Kyler thing, too, that was something you said a couple weeks ago where it's like he he seems to totally trust himself, whatever, 90% of the time. Right. But right now, the few times he doesn't, they're, they're, not just, they're not just a bad pass. They're getting intercepted against Seattle the first time. It was a pick six against Seattle this time. They weren't pick sixes, but they scored like two plays later. You know, Right, so yeah. yeah. They're yeah. extremely costly right now. It felt like a pick six, right? Yeah, basically, <laughs> especially the first one. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.